Tilly. PM News on STV coming up. Paula Tanganji visits the northwest region of Cameroon under his ministerial casket to dialogue with the population. The Minister of Territorial Administration was in Batibo subdivision as well. Military officers of the multinational joint task force have ended their training program, Unified Focus 2018. The men and women have been better equipped on how to fight back in war zones while protecting the population and their colleagues. Those were top stories. Good evening and welcome. Paul Atanganji has made his first official visit to the northwest region of Cameroon as Minister of Territorial Administration, a mission to dialogue with the people, get their complaints and take them back to Yaoundé to seek possible solutions. Details with Lovetbe. The Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atanganji, has made his first official visit as a minister to the northwest region. While in the northwest region, he held his first meeting with divisional officers and divisional officers of the region behind closed doors to the minister. The head of state has sent him to come and dialogue with the population, find out their worries and take them back to him. It's a mission of uh, sensitization and a mission of dialogue. You know, the head of state, His Excellency Paul Bia has told us to discuss and dialogue with him. To have all your worries and send it to him. All the worries that started from the lawyers and the teachers. We can tell you with confidence that the head of state has solved more than 90 percent. The Northwest has been identified as the second home of the head of state. So that's why I have come to tell them that the head of state has you in his heart. The visit was also an opportunity for the head of state to extend his message of congratulations to administrative authorities and defense forces in the region for their efforts in handling the current crisis. The head of state asked me to come and thank all the administrative authorities as well as the forces of law and order for the wonderful job they have done for the past 14 years to manage the disturbances of the region. And the head of state told me to tell the governor and all the forces of law and order that they can count on him, that he will give them all the resources that need to them to accomplish their missions. The minister later proceeded to Batibo subdivision to meet with traditional rulers, a meeting which was not open to the private press, but the agenda of the meeting was disclosed. Traditional leaders, I will be meeting them today, and I will tell them that the head of state has reminded them that they met him in front of force. So they have to work closely with their administration. We are all partners. The force of law and order, as well as the administrative authorities, cannot work without the support of the local population. Recommendations made by President Paul Bia during the Council of Ministers meeting that was yesterday have been analyzed by a civil society activist as not a way forward for the development of Cameroon. Larinette Apaji Abongwa. Reduce unemployment. Rationally make use of public resources, fight against corruption, ensure the effective organization of the 2019 African Cup of Nations. These are some recommendations given by the President of the Republic, Paul Bia, to members of government as they met for the Council of Ministers meeting March 15. For these civil society activists, these recommendations are not the solution to the problems faced by Cameroonians. He explains that the solution is not to change government officials. It is fundamentally in President Paul Bia's capacity to manage the country after 35 years. He says the best way to manage state resources is not to offer official cars to every service head with huge fuel bonds. In the political sphere, in the political sphere, the creation of the Ministry of Decentralization and Local Development has been considered by President Paul Bia as a way to associate the people in the management of problems that affect their daily lives. The head of state has recommended that the decentralization process in the country be intensified. For Dr. Ile Kamga, the solution goes beyond giving instructions. 
M. Biapol ne doit pas faire croire aux Camerounais qu'il n'existait pas. Dr. Ilek Kamga says the creation of the Ministry of Decentralization and Local Development does not mean that there was not a service which handled issues of decentralization. For him, the act of the head of state is a multiplication of the same institution and that it will not facilitate the effective implementation of decentralization, rather, it will increase the cost of friends of the government. The three-year special youth plan launched in 2016 has, however, gained steam. New ministers that have joined the Young Folk government, like the Minister of Secondary Education and that of Decentralization and Local Development, alongside others, have as tax to increase performance for the good of the the Constitutional Council has begun serving the purpose of its existence and some credibility can be given to its members. This is the point of view of some political scientists in Yaoundé. Nonetheless, the postponement of the verdict of the SDF petition and withdrawal of the NUDP petition remains an intriguing factor. Larinetta Pajie Bongwa reports. Out of the six different petitions at the level of the Constitutional Council, Four have been considered unacceptable, one withdrawn, and the verdict of that of the SDF against the CPDM list in the West Region pushed to the 19th of March. This is the first hearing of the council and political scientists have gone further to make an appreciation of it in line with the much expected credible ruling of the country's highest institution in legal matters. Some of the decisions that the Constitutional Council uh, arrived at is... Uh, plausible because they tried as much as possible to respect what the constitution says. Well, I think the, the hot knot is coming from the western region and I think that uh, the constitutional council should play the right role because evidently we should not go postponing and postponing. The rule of law was manifest yesterday in the, uh, in, in the manner in which they, they conducted uh, the, the proceedings yesterday in the sense that no one was favored. They emphasized and insisted on the law and nothing but the law. A point of curiosity during the audience of the Constitutional Council was a possible explanation why a political party will table a petition and withdraw it on the Day of Judgment. Maybe they, they found some errors in their, in, 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 in their petition. Maybe they had uh, overreacted. The first thing, another uh, one will be speculative. Maybe there are some behind the curtain arrangements. The UNDP in this case, and in the case of the Adamawa region, filed a complaint against the CPDM list. And right while the Constitutional Council is meeting, decided freely, voluntarily, in their freedom, to withdraw that complaint. They have every right. And it shows the integrity of the UNDP by doing that. Because you have a right to complain, but you also have a right to withdraw your complaint without anybody manipulating you or forcing you or threatening you. Nobody threatened or manipulated the UNDP. However, the verdict of the Constitutional Council on other cases has won the institution some level of credibility at the start of their mandate as opined by these political scientists. We move back to the northwest region of Cameroon where the CPDM political party has officially launched its senatorial campaign. The ceremony took place behind closed doors at Ayaba Hotel, chaired by Prime Minister Philemonia. Lovet Be, Ignatius Amabo. Senatorial elections are around the corner and political parties in the country are on the field campaigning for their senatorial candidates. The CPDM party is not left out as they have officially launched senatorial campaigns in the northwest region. The original launching took place behind closed doors, chaired by Prime Minister Phil Munyang. Today is the official launching. There's nothing to hide there. It's an appeal to, uh, to, the, uh, um, to the, uh, campaign leaders to take certain dispositions, to be able to work and to meet their, to meet their electorate and so on, and for the candidates to, to be able to, uh, to move around and meet the candidates. And I uh, hope that by doing this, we can be uh, assured of a good result come 25th of, uh, of this month. The CPDM senatorial candidate also denies the information circulating that CPDM councillors are demanding for the sum of 1 million francs each before they can vote for the CPDM senatorial list. We are CPDM councillors are expensive people. They do not go for elections for money. 
we have a focus, we have a vision for the region. In Boyo Division, Fundong yesterday, the councillor said that they are too big to be bought. If they are to be bought, not just anybody can buy them. Let me tell you, let me be frank to you, they cannot buy, we are not, we are not showing money, but we are showing ideas, we have a vision, we are telling them exactly what we are going to do from this 2018 for the five years that are going to come. According to CBTM militants, the party is working as a team and there is no need to fear. I believe in a team, teamwork. We are working as a team and we have concerted, we have been make, having meetings every day and I think that we are going to deliver the goods and uh, somebody should have, have no fear. We are working as a team and God is with us and we are going to succeed. So Senatorial elections have been scheduled for March 25th, 28th. Vice equally carried out by the UDP United Democratic Party in the Northwest region, calling on councillors to shy away from party indiscipline and vote the UDP. As many political parties in the country await the upcoming senatorial elections on March 25, 2018, the United Democratic Party, headed by El Haji Lawan Bako, has launched its senatorial campaigns in the Northwest region. According to El Haji Lawan Bako, in a press briefing, the UDP party is the people's alternative and the party decided to put up a senatorial list following the failure of the CBDM and SDF members of parliament and senate to deliver. Senators and the members of National Assembly have felt that the public is crying and are saying loud and clear that we do not see the presence of this government as we are elected. The food problem, which is now known as a food crisis, which is unable to have a clear cut way for people to benefit or to enjoy their aspiration. Our children are in bushes, some are in foreign land, and the only way we can solve this problem is to build together discuss with them and the government so that things can work. And we are going to take the challenge if we are elected because the senators and parliamentarians of the SDF and senior of the English expression fail. According to the leader of the party, the party has senatorial candidates in, in Mezam, Nunga Mantung, Momo, Menchum, Boyo and Buid Vision, and the senatorial list for the Northwest region has officially been accepted by Elekam. Regretting the fact that other political parties have failed woefully to handle the Anglophone crisis in the country, the UDP party is appealing to councillors in the Northwest region to, to shy away from party discipline that corrupts and manipulates voters and give a sanctioned vote to the SDF and CBDM party and vote for the United Democratic Party. On to one of our lead stories, military officials from Chad, Cameroon, USA, Benin and beyond have ended their training workshop Unified Focus 2018 at the Douala Naval Base today. The training carried out in Douala and Garwa was to strengthen international relations and boost the fight against terrorism. Here is the report. It is with much enthusiasm that elements of the Cameroon Army the Multinational Joint Task Force, the African Union, the United Nations Organization, and several other African and international countries returned to their various duty posts after undergoing an intensive training. Um, inject we are given to the participants and we are well served based on the um, situation on the ground. And I believe um, everybody has learned a lot from the exercise. We'll go back to our respective countries and um, try to pass the lessons we learned to the troops on the ground to better their operations in the fight against Boko Haram terrorists. The program, dubbed Unified Focus 2018, gathered about 250 participants home and abroad to strengthen relations, transmit new knowledge so as to better counter the Boko Haram phenomenon and terrorism in the Lake Chad Basin. So the primary outcomes, again, are increased strength in relationships, uh, for, for all the participating countries, an ability for us to, to again exchange the best practices, the best techniques and experiences uh, that, uh, that all the different countries and participants had over the year, bring that together all in one location, share those experiences, 
uh, transmit new knowledge uh, to all the different participants so that we can then take that back to our own countries, to our own forces, and improve upon the capacity of our forces uh, to conduct operations in the region. Participants were drilled on medical intervention in battle, how to use explosives under pressure, as well as strategic, operational, and tactical exercises with Douala and Garwa as operation grounds. What a fantastic opportunity for us to come together, uh, for us to, to share best practices and experiences, uh, to, to better understand uh, what are the best military techniques and tactics that we can utilize to help uh, counter violent extremist organizations, to come together to strengthen our partnerships and to better focus uh, for a brighter future for all of us here. Unified Focus 2018, which started on Monday, March 12th and ends Friday, March 16th, is a fruitful military cooperation between the United States of America, Cameroon and countries of the Lake Chad Basin led by AFRICOM. Two newly promoted army officials assigned to the Litra region have been commissioned into their functions today by General Pai Philip, who sat in for defense boss Joseph Betty Asomo. Their responsibilities will be to ensure the national integrity of the military in Cameroon. Henry Wana reports. Kenem Mahijang is henceforth the commander in chief of the Intermilitary School of Logistics based in Douala. Why Colonel Laurent Amang is the new commander of the Intermilitary Center for Specialized Training in the Domain of Engineering. The two newly promoted military officials have been installed into their new functions Friday, March 16, by General Pai Philippe of Division at the Ministry of Defense in a strict military ceremony, which was void of perpetual speeches, a task they are aware might be very challenging. Uh, glory be to God first, and therefore I know that uh, my, the task of this mission is not easy, because the mission is to, is to instruct. Uh, is served uh, soldiers permanently, permanently, and I know that uh, since uh, my young age in the army, I was doing the same thing. On behalf of the defense minister, General Pai Philippe urged the newly installed integrity of the military in Cameroon. The elected staff delegates of the Douala City Council have been challenged to respect hierarchy and laws of the state for a smooth discharge of their duties. The call was made by the government delegate to the Douala City Council, Dr. Fritz Ntonentone. Henry Wana. There are 12 of them in total who now carry the hope and aspiration of their colleagues in the Douala City Council as staff representatives whose mission is to advocate for better working conditions and other social benefits whenever the need may arise. Well, what I can say is that I cannot pronounce myself as the representative I'm not equal to the tax. And what I want to clarify here is that we are not the opponent of the executive, no. We are defending the right of our, our colleagues, the right of the, the entire personnel. If there is something that comes to us as a right and the executive refuses, you understand, no? to accord it, we say no. We fight for that. The, the other way is that we are the employees somewhere and we have somebody who employ us. And we cannot just consider ourselves a member of a syndicate, you understand, and put it in mind that we are not working somewhere. No. Before contesting for something, we must have the proof. And if the executive decides to say, okay, this is the way, and we discover that it does not satisfy the personnel, we say no, but not through fight. But by true negotiation. Commissioning them into their function Friday, March 16, the government delegate to the Douala City Council, Dr. Fritz Ntonetone, has challenged them to be law abiding and of good morale. They are taking over office at a very crucial time when their predecessors are still awaiting court judgment after they staged a protest last year and whose salaries have not yet been paid equally to date. 
the court took cases are on the court. Their lawyers also sued the, the urban council to the court, and the urban council sued them to the court also. So the two cases are both there, and the investigation is still on. So now nobody can say, even though we are not happy about their condition, but nothing can be done by us unless the decision comes from the court. Much is no doubt expected from this new team, with their colleagues watching from a grieving point to see what they have to offer during their two-year mandate in office. Let's get news out of Cameroon with VOA. This is no ordinary house. So I'm standing in front of the first permitted 3D printed home in America. This house is actually printed in high winds, blowing dust and rain. The technology to build a 3D printed house must be able to withstand extreme weather conditions because the goal is to build them in developing countries where conditions are not always ideal. We work with really the, the poorest families in the world that, um, that don't have shelters. Bringing 3D printed homes to the poorest in the world, such as this tent community in Haiti, is possible because of the partnership between a robotics construction company named Icon and the nonprofit organization New Story. The magnitude of the, of the problem that we face is so big, it's about a billion people that don't have one of life's most basic human needs, and that's safe shelter. What we really need for the size of the issue is exponential growth. And that has to come through significantly decreasing costs, increasing speed, while doing that with all sac without sacrificing quality. The solution may lie with a new 3D printer and the unique mortar material used to print this house. We ran this printer at about a quarter speed to print this house and we were able to complete the house in less than 48 hours of print time. At full speed, it could be as little as 12 hours to print a house. Compare that to the 15 days it would normally take New Story to build a traditional home. Instead of it taking about a year to build a community, we could do it in just a few months. A 3D printed home is also cheaper. Traditional style, one of New Story homes is about $6,500 per home. Right, we believe over time we can get the new home below $4,000. Bringing housing to the poor and underserved of the world, usually those are the last people to get advanced technologies and advanced materials, and it's awesome that we're starting there first. New Story is working with local nonprofits, governments, and families to help fund these homes. The nonprofit plans to start printing homes in El Salvador this year. The goal is to create permanent 3D printed homes in developing countries that will last for generations. Elizabeth Lee, VOA News, Austin, Texas. Sports in this newscast with John Paul Sama. It is a jam-packed weekend of football action all over the national territory with both the MT and Elite 1 and 2 championships as well as the female championship in program. Bertrand Ebuele will have his baptism of fire at the helm of Coton Sport of Garwa who are at home to New Stars Football Club of Douala. Bambuto's Football Club of Douala welcomes Dragon of Yaoundé. Unispo of Bafang takes on Union Kamakai. Fertio Football Club of Jiko Banjun are away to UMS of Loom at the Loom Municipal Stadium. And the Zastra Football Club of Douala battle for Vu at the Moliko Omnisport Stadium. 14th place Apeches on Fu tackles star Renard of Melong and the newly appointed Egle coach Minko Biwei begins his journey of revival for the team this Sunday in Yaoundé against fellow strugglers Yafut. Young Sport Academy of Bamenda, after their first defeat of the season in Garwa, will look for redemption against Columbus de Sud. And heading Sport of the Lake, the defending champions take on newly promoted IS Fortuna. In the MTN Elite 2 Championship this Saturday, league leaders PWD of Bamenda go into match day 5, looking for their fifth straight win of the season against fourth place Renaissance of Gumu. Panther Dunde welcomes Tone Kalara Club of Yaoundé, while AS Matelo takes on Dinamo. AS Etwame Ki will battle it out against Avion Duncam, while second place Canon Sportif of Yaoundé takes on eighth place Rassin Football Club of Bafusam. Cosmos FA of Bam will test their footballing strength against Lyon Blessé of Futuni, and the Northwest Regional Derby will see Bank Bullets of Kambe hosting sister club National Polytechnic of Bamenda. Finally, the female championship goes into day one this Sunday with a clear fee the SAR against Social Football Club fee 
Dumbam in Yawundi. John Paul Sama bringing us to the end of this Friday news edition on STV. Thank you so much for watching. Have a colorful weekend. STV, votre télé.